sampling can be um, a bit iffy if you're the home inspector. Uh, again, one of the rules for home inspectors is not to change the home in any way, especially without the uh, permission and request of the homeowner. Obviously, you start changing things on a house that you don't own and uh, you know you start getting phone calls from lawyers. So uh, EPA's recommendation assumes that the person doing the sampling actually is maybe a uh, professional lead abatement contractor or somebody who definitely has approval from the homeowner to do these changes because what EPA is recommending is a uh, destructive test as opposed to the non-destructive that a home inspector is supposed to do. So what EPA is recommending for sampling is that you create an outline, you score that outline maybe with a, um, with a utility knife, you use a cutting tool and you, you grab all that paint and you send it to a lab. Now this has the advantage that if you've got seven layers of paint, that lab's going to be able to tell you if any of those layers, because they're going to mix it up and you know if layer three has lead, the lab's going to be able to find that. Um, by contrast, a home inspector is going to test the first level, and you know I talked briefly in the last segment about why, you know, only if you've got the paint in good condition, only the top level would be what is necessary. Finally, the abatement for lead-based paint, you scrape off what will come off, you know, the loose stuff. Obviously, exterior paint is going to be a lot more likely to be loose. If you still got tight paint, there's no use trying to get that off. It's tight and it's solid, and you know, a kid's not going to be able to eat that paint. But on the exterior, yeah, with the sun and the sprinklers and rain and snow, um, you got to scrape off what will come off. The rest of it, uh, you could try to get that off with, for example, a sandblaster, but you don't want to do that. And the reason for that is a sandblaster, assuming that we do have lead, that sandblaster is going to blow uh, lead all over the place. It'll be impossible to contain and the mere act of trying to solve the problem is going to cause a much bigger problem. So I'll often ask my students in live classes if they believe that uh, that abatement should involve a sandblaster to get every last bit of that off and the correct answer is no. You don't want to do that. So it's a very simple process. Scrape off what will come off, capture that, get that into the garbage, make sure it's not uh, dumped along the soil line as you're bringing it from point A to point B as you're getting it into the garbage can. And then paint over. Paint over what remains. And that doesn't mean that all of the lead is gone, but it means that it's coated and it's protected, and then you'll have to do the same thing probably in another five years. I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, let me know. If it has not, let me know. And you can always gather more information at therealtoredge.com or at masteryourmansion.com.